As you can see in this video, Yao Ming crumbled down in excruciating pain but without twisting or spraining any part of his ankle. What really happened was Yao Ming suffered something called a navicular stress fracture. So guys, we're just going to begin with a pre-quiz here just to uh, get see what you guys know about navicular stress fractures. So, uh, so you guys, if you guys can all get into pairs and just start discussing the answers to the, uh, these three questions, we'll come back in uh, five minutes and talk about it. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe the mechanism and clinically evaluate the injury. You should be able to outline two main treatments for NSF and the evidence for each. You should be able to list an appropriate rehab program and return to activity guideline and be able to suggest which treatment and rehab should be recommended for a specific clinical scenario. So the mechanism of the vicular stress fracture is first of all due to repetitive loading such as during activities such as running, jumping and sprinting and the navicular is also exposed to compressive forces from the weight of the body. And this becomes even worse when you combine it with running and jumping. Another reason that can contribute to navicular stress fracture is the repetitive strain to the muscle of the foot. Uh, when the muscles are not strong enough or injured, then the force from the activities such as running and jumping uh, is transferred directly to the bone which makes it more prone to fracture. And there are two types of fractures. The first one is insufficiency fractures, which is uh, people with low BMD, osteoporosis, runners with female athlete triad, and metabolic bone disease. And the second type is fatigue fracture, uh, which is an overuse stress uh, in people with normal BMD. And it's also an imbalance of the body's ability to repair and the rate of strain and micro damage. The NSF occurs most commonly in the central third of the navicular and there's a couple of reasons. During the heel strike, the navicular is compressed with maximal effort between the cuneiforms and talus, which makes the force focus on the central, central third of the navicular. This central part of the bone is less vascular compared to the lateral and medial side, which is less blood supply, and this makes it more prone to stress fracture. The lack of blood supply also makes it harder to heal. Okay, NSF is often misdiagnosed due to problems visualizing stress fractures on playing radiographs. Pain occurs during and following physical activities such as sprinting, jumping, and pushing off. For the physical examination, you palpate the foot to identify areas of tenderness and swelling. And this is typically over the dorsal aspect of the navicular bone called the end spot, which is shown on the slide. T symptoms can be reproduced by hopping on affected leg with foot implant reflection. If there is a suspected NSF, the athlete goes through imaging. Plain radio radiographs have poor sensitivity, only 33% sensitivity. And this is because bony resorption requires 10 days to 3 weeks to allow visualization on plain radiographs. So a triple phase bone scan is recommended as first diagnostic tool. CT scans are um, needed to secure the di diagnosis and MRIs can be used as well if bone scan and CT scans are unavailable. So for the imaging, um, triple phase bone scan is the recommended uh, imaging tool used to diagnose uh, nuclear stretch factors. Uh, triple phase bone scans are positive at an early stage and it's almost 100% sensitive for NSF. It reveals uptick in navicular bone which indicates stretch reactions or fractures. It actually has to be correlated with uh, further imaging as they are non-specific, uh, lack resolution of the anatomic characteristics of NSF. Yeah. And uh, so basically, after you do the uh, three-phase bone scan, you, it is recommended to, that you do a CT scan. The CT scan is a gold standard for optimal evaluation of fracture once bone scan has demonstrated increased uptake in the navicular. It has excellent anatomic resolution. The vi it visualizes the cortical defects and gapping at the fracture site. And in uh, a study done by Burton and colleagues, it compared CT scans and MRI findings in 20 NSF injuries 
Seven fractures were not noted by MRI, so CT scans are, are very good for uh, discovering this injury. Uh, MRIs are extremely sensitive and provides good spatial resolution. It depicts fractures and surrounding edema. It, although, it is very, uh, it, although it depicts fractures and surrounding edema, it is high cost and limited in availability. So it doesn't really add significant info if uh, both scan and CT scans are already available. So, what is the best method to image this injury? So, get into Paris and just quickly pretend your partner has a foot injury, suspecting it is NSF. Go over with them how you would determine if they have an NSF, focusing on the physical examination and imaging. I'm going to talk about the treatments for NSF. There's two types of treatments for NSF. There's conservative treatment and surgical treatment. Conservative treatment consists of non-weight-bearing cast immobilization or weight-bearing cast immobilization. Whereas surgery, there's two options too. There's bone grafting and open reduction and internal fixation or or. Conservative treatment is often used when there is a partial and non-partial complete fracture. When we compare the two types of conservative treatment, non-weight-bearing and weight-bearing, we can see that the duration of treatment and their return to sports time is pretty similar. However, when we compare the percentage of patients able to return to activity after 12 months, 96% of the non-weight-bearing patients are able to return, compared to 47% of the, of the weight-bearing patients. One of the reasons for this is that weight-bearing often results in unsuccessful and results in delayed union, refracture, and fracture progression. However, no such complication exists with non-weight-bearing. The benefits of doing a conservative treatment over surgery is that conservative treatment has a high healing rate and no risk of attaining surgical complications. Surgical treatment is often used for the removal of bone fragments and non-united or displaced fractures. The two types of surg surgical treatment is bone grafting and ORIF. When we compare the duration of treatment, bone grafting has a significantly shorter treatment time. However, ORIF uh, has one significant benefit over bone grafting, which is the fact that it adds strength to the navicular bone. Uh, when we compare it to the return to sports time, we can see that both treatments have an average of 5.2 months. And similarly, the percentage of patients able to return to activity after 12 months is both 82%. However, one of the potential complications and disadvantages of surgery is the fact that surgery increases the risk of operative complications such as infection, nerve damage, and also a lot of other risks associated with anesthesia. Rehabilitation begins after either surgery or conservative treatment with the foot being cast for at least six weeks, uh, after which it is evaluated uh, for tenderness and pain over the end spot. If uh, tenderness is still present, the foot is cast for another two weeks and re-evaluated. If there's no tenderness present, the athlete may begin protected weight-bearing activities, uh, such as walking using crutches. Uh, this point is also a good idea to uh, institute a physical therapy regimen to help strengthen the foot, improve flexibility, and improve the post-immobilization stiffness that the athlete will likely uh, experience after being cast for so long. When the athlete is finally able to support their full weight with no weakness or stiffness, they may, they may begin weight-bearing activities but should not return to play until further assessment. This assessment involves the return to play protocol, which is heavily influenced by the severity of the fracture. Uh, the average return to play time for the lowest grade fracture is around three months, the highest grade being 6.8 months. Uh, because navicular stress fracture is the highest fracture, the athlete should wait until the injury has completely healed before returning to play to prevent further complications like delayed union or non-union union which increases the return to play time. The return to play assessment should involve a functional movement test, uh, for example, movement in all directions with full weight bearing. Uh, sport specific movements are very important. Uh, for example, in basketball, this could involve driving to the net for a layup, pivoting on either foot, and a jump shot. Uh, the psychological confidence and mental readiness of the athlete must also be assessed to determine whether they are fit to return to play. If there is evidence that the athlete cannot complete any movement 
without pain or weakness, the return to play is not permitted, and the athlete must continue the rehabilitation program. Case study. Yao Ming had a stress fracture in his left foot on February 2008. He opted for surgery and returned to action five months later in July 2008 for the Olympics. In the 2008-2009 season, he suffered another NSF in his left foot and required surgery once again, missing the entire following season. After that, Yao Ming decided to retire in July 2011. So class, uh, could you make a group of four or five? and discuss what could Yao Ming have done differently to have prolonged his career. Uh, discuss what best treatment based on evidence in this presentation, and we have a return to activity guideline. So after discussing with your group, what do you think is the best option for Yao Ming? Based on the literature, we believe that Yao Ming should get surgery. This is because there was no difference from, was found between the two treatments, conservative or surgery. However, all ORIF has been shown to increase the navicular bone strength and therefore decrease the risk of future fractures. Since Yao Ming is an athlete, we believe that he would like to compete in basketball for as long as he wants and therefore ORIF would be the best option for Yao Ming. Students should now be able to describe the mechanism and clinically evaluate the injury, outline two main treatments for NSF and the evidence for each, and list an appropriate rehab program and return to activity guideline.